Today in this lecture we are going to discuss combinations of different patterns of cardiac output curve. We have basically discussed the normal cardiac output curve previously and we discussed that according to the cardiac output curve that at normal right atrial pressure at normal right atrial pressure at normal venous return the cardiac output of an average person is 5 liter per minute here we have the cardiac output here we have the right atrial pressure and we have discussed the normal cardiac output curve which is 5 liters per minute at normal 0 millimeter of mercury right atrial pressure at normal pressure of the right atrium we also discussed that when the right atrial pressure starts increasing due to the venous return or any other reason in a normal person while keeping the other parameters constant the cardiac output will increase we see that if the right atrial pressure increase the cardiac output starts increasing above the normal level then then a point comes when there is no further increase and it makes a plateau. But today we are combining different patterns of the cardiac output curves. We are considering the combinations of different cardiac output curves that are not normal. Now we have drawn two different cardiac output curves here. One cardiac output curve is showing hyper effective hyper effective heart and increased intrapleural pressure then the other curve is showing hypo effective hypo effective heart and reduced intrapleural pressure in our last lecture we discussed that if the intrapleural pressure is increased if the intrapleural pressure is increased here we have the heart On both sides of the heart we have the lungs and here we have the diaphragm here we have the ribs so we discussed that there is a intrapleural pressure of around minus 4 millimeter of mercury here we have the intrapleural pressure of minus 4 millimeter of mercury and that is normal that pressure is present in the thorax and at that at that intrapleural pressure at normal intrapleural pressure the normal cardiac output in a normal person is 5 liter per minute and if it starts if the pressure starts increasing the right atrial pressure start not the intrapleural pressure then the cardiac output will increase what will happen if this intrapleural pressure increase towards minus 2 minus 1 0 or if it starts decreasing like minus 6 minus 8 then we see that with the increase in the intrapleural pressure this cardiac output curve will shift towards the right side this curve will shift toward the right side and what does the shift of the cardiac output curve toward the right side means it means that initially at this 0 millimeter of mercury pressure at this level we had 5 liter of at this letter at this level our cardiac output level was around 5 liter per minute but if we start increasing the right atrial pressure this curve will shift toward right side due to the increase in the intrapleural pressure and the, sh the curve will shift towards here we will have to we will have to reach this level of right atrial pressure with the increase in intrapleural pressure the right atrial pressure is here the intrapleural pressure is here this pressure is in the thorax while right atrial pressure is at the level of the right atrium so if the intrapleural pressure increases the whole the whole of this curve will shift here and at this level at zero level we will have no cardiac output we will have 
no cardiac output the cardiac output only will start here and after that it will start increasing at this level so if the if the intrapleural pressure increases there is an increase in the intrapleural pressure it will only shift the cardiac function curve toward the right side in our last lecture we discussed the different uh, factors which increases the intrapleural pressure and shift the curve toward the right side and shift means at normal right atrial pressure there will be no cardiac output the cardiac output will start increasing only after reaching this level only when the right atrial pressure has reached this point now this is only shift toward the right side but at the same time if the heart is hyper effective if it is hyper effective if the heart is contracting more the heart rate the contraction of the heart rate is more and the power of the heart is also more then not only will this curve shift toward this right side but also it will shift above the normal level level if if the normal cardiac function curve was at 10 liter the hyper effective heart will be pumping more than this level it will be like around 12 or 13 liters per minute so by increasing the intrapleural pressure the curve shifts toward the right side and by in making the heart hyper effective making it more effective than normal heart then this curve basically shifts upward now what happens when the intrapleural pressure is reduced and the heart is hypo effective then in when the intrapleural pressure is reduced then we see that even at lower pressure even at lower pressure we see an increase in the cardiac output we see an increase in the cardiac output even before this point it means the curve is shifted towards the left side it shifts toward the left side now what makes the the uh, what basically uh, what factors decreases the intrapleural pressure or the pressure in the thorax so we discussed that uh, negative uh, pressure ventilation which is uh, basically which also occurs in normal breathing and also which is basically used in the iron lung which was uh, used in uh, vent for patients of polio for their ventilation so decrease the decrease in intrapleural pressure either due to the an iron lung or due to the normal breathing cycle it will shift the curve towards the left side it will shift this red color normal curve towards this left side it means that even at lower pressure we will have some cardiac output normally the cardiac output starts coming at this point and then it starts increasing but in a uh, in a patient with low or reduced intrapleural pleural pressure we will see some cardiac output even before this zero level even at lesser right atrial pressure now if this heart is hypo effective as well if this heart is hypo effective as well now we discussed different uh, factors which makes the heart hypo effective like myocardial infarction which basically damages uh, the coronary vessels and blocks the blood supply to the heart so that there is no blood supply of the heart and the heart cannot function properly similarly myocarditis or valve valve disease like valve stenosis or valve regurgitation all of these conditions will make the heart hypo effective it will not be able to pump normally then hypo effective heart will be will not be able to pump normally and this curve the plateau of the cardiac function curve will shift from this level towards the lower side and this heart will not be able to pump like the normal heart and the the plateau the plateau of the heart will reduce will decrease from this level for for example around 10 liters per minute 
towards this level or around 5 liters per minute even with the best performance even with the increase in right atrial pressure even with the increase in the right atrial pressure this hypo effective heart will not be able to increase the cardiac output beyond this point it will make it its plateau at this level at this level the normal heart will be able to make its plateau at around this level the hyper effective heart will be able to uh, increase its pl uh, plateau level even above the normal heart so we see two different factors the hyper effective heart and the hypo effective heart and the increase in intrapleural pressure or in the thorax in the chest and the reduced intrapleural pressure so an increase in the intrapleural pressure will shift the curve towards the right side and a reduced intrapleural pressure will shift the curve towards the left side right shift and left shift and then if the heart is hyper effective it is pumping more the heart rate is more the power of the pumping is more it will shift the plateau of the of the pump uh, the cardiac function curve towards the upper side it will shift towards the upper side or it will increase this heart will be able to pump more at the same level of the right atrial pressure but if the heart is hypo effective due to some conditions like valvular conditions or infections or uh, coronary vessel disease then that heart will not be able to pump more blood or even normal blood even at higher level of the right atrial pressure even at the higher level of the right atrial pressure the normal heart will be able to increase its cardiac output when the right atrial pressure is increasing but the hypo effective heart will not be able to increase its cardiac output even with the increase in the right atrial pressure now it's not necessary that the heart is hypo effective and there is a reduced intrapleural pressure it is quite possible it is quite possible that the high that the heart is hypo effective and there is increase in intrapleural pressure and it is also possible that the heart is hyper effective and there is reduced intrapleural pressure similarly it is quite possible that the heart is hypo effective the heart is hypo effective and there is no change there is no change in the right atrial pressure similarly it is quite possible that the heart is hyper effective and there is no change in the right atrial pressure so the purpose of explaining this graph the purpose of the combinations of this different patterns of the cardiac output curves is to explain different scenarios in which the heart may be normal or the heart may be hyper effective or the heart may be hypo effective or the intrapleural pressure may be increased or the intrapleural pressure may be reduced or the heart may be hyper effective with reduced intrapleural pressure or the heart may be hypo effective with increased intrapleural pressure or the heart may be hyper effective with normal right atrial pressure so that's all about the combination combinations of different patterns of cardiac output curves thanks a lot for watching the video